Hello and welcome to the Chengdu Gaming Federation podcast. My name is Charlie. I'm here very excited at the Game On exhibition in Chengdu at the Eastern Suburb Memory Park. And I'm joined by a very special guest who's named Leonardo. Hello and welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Nice to be here. So I just got a fantastic tour of the exhibition from Leonardo. This is my second time visiting the exhibition. I've been telling everyone within earshot to come visit this place over the last week. And man, it's, I mean, for someone who's interested in games and living in Chengdu, this is about as exciting as it gets. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Where do you come from and what is your role in this project? Um, I'm the exhibition consultant of the, of the show and I've been working with it for nearly eight years. Uh, and uh, my background is software engineering and I've always loved video games and uh, I started to be involved with programming and try to become like a, a game developer myself but I think that uh, I started like to, to go to other areas <laughs> and uh, I found those guys so basically the exhibition has been touring around the world for nearly 20 years um, yes um, and since since maybe 2002 I guess so not that much but it's been touring for a while and it started in London and uh, actually it was not conceived to it was not expected that it would tour that long and uh, but yeah but you know like there was a, a great feedback and then other countries started like to want the show as well because we have things that no one else has <laughs> yeah yeah for anyone who hasn't visited this exhibition, it's like a history of video games starting at the very beginning. Exactly, like, uh, and I think that it is very important not only because it's entertaining, but um, but I think that the, the one of the most important points of the show is not only um, to celebrate the um, the history of video games, but also to preserve it, because this is something that is extremely important. So. Um, because this tells us about ourselves, about humans, what we're trying to create, like since we can, since like since from the '60s. So tell me, how did Game On begin? Where did this begin, and sort of who had the original idea, if you know, and how did this all get started almost 20 years ago? Well, um, the original creator, like uh, the main original creator, is called Lucian King. He and he. He sounds like a final boss. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> he is. Um, he's a boss for sure. And uh, I think that he and um, and a group of people, like I think that he and uh, contacted Barbican. For those who don't know, Barbican, um, it's a, a, um, a cultural center located in London. So it's one of the largest of uh, in Europe, and uh, it's. Um, it, the Barbican produces exhibitions, right? So, like, uh, maybe so. Twenty years ago, this one of these curators, like Lucian King, he he had this idea. He are, he's already involved in the in the gaming industry for a while. And in the beginning, it was just to be uh, maybe a, a three months exhibition. But then, like, people got more interest, and then, like, we started like to get uh, more involved with within the community. And uh, of course, we all know that the uh, video game community is something that it's very tight because it brings people together, right? So, like, we started like to receive like uh, a lot of, um, uh, of games and and you know, like, from developers and also from collectors who say, "Hey, I have this in my house. It's very important." And only, you know, like please show it to the world you know yeah truly precious yeah. things here when a collector gives his things for us he knows that we're gonna you know like uh, show it to the world and take good care of it it's like a it's like a priceless object it's like a museum in here absolutely yeah it's a touring museum it's funny yeah. because right next door there's a Leonardo da Vinci exhibition <laughs> yes. which you may have seen and when I left here with my girlfriend last week we're like that looks lame we're like so lame it's like history of gaming that's yeah, cool that is it that's the, that's the real stuff yeah but you're right There there is like priceless sort of stuff in here and as we were just walking through the exhibition just now you, you said something which I thought was pretty interesting which is there are a lot of collectors and enthusiasts around the world, but a lot of this stuff you just can't buy because it's so rare and so difficult to find and so old. Exactly, and and actually, uh, I think that um, it's a it's a good way to to tell that we are a small museum in a way, but also we are better 
You know, like I think that you're better because if you go to a museum, actually, like uh, you go to a lot of museums that are involved in technology, like, uh, but you cannot really play the things that are being displayed. Yeah. Here you can. Right. You know, like, and that's the important thing. And you're playing the original hardware. So everything that, those things, you saw it for yourself, you know, like. Great the, point. The motherboards, everything is there. It's exactly how it, how it was created. For people who are really interested in a lot of this stuff, I mean, there's just nowhere where you can see some of these things. And there's so many things inside the exhibition. I'll give you one example. I was just meeting with a friend for lunch today, and he mentioned that he came here, and his favorite thing which he enjoyed here was Missile Command. And he said, you know, what, what happened to the ball? You know, the ball which you roll around to play Missile Command. He's like, why did that go away? That was so much fun, such a cool gameplay mechanism, such a cool controller. And it's something which we haven't seen in, in decades. And for anyone who knows what Missile Command is, you probably also know that there's nowhere where you've been able to play it for like 20 years. You know, almost nowhere has like a working Missile Command. It's the kind of thing that I remember from being a kid in like the 1990s. You would find it at like pizza places, you know, like an old missile command that still worked. But that stuff's been gone for so long now. And now you can come here to this exhibition and see that and just dozens of games like that, which are kind of kind of gone, you know, just not really anywhere. Exactly, yes. Yeah, you, 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 you made a good point, you know, like, because also Missile Command is one of my favorite games, you know, like, it tells so much about it, you know, like, and also, you know, like, have you ever finished Missile Command? No. You know, like, it just appears the end. Really? In, in its, yeah, because, you know, like, the game was conceived during the Cold War. It's a Cold War game, it's totally. It's a Cold War game, you know, like, yeah. so people didn't have, like, their hopes very high, you know, right. like, it's the, I think this is also uh, interesting, like how the game developer, like how the game developers, how the games deeply is is deeply related, related with the, with what was happening in the time. You know, like the same thing happens in science fiction, of course, and in the in the in, in it reflects on games. So, for example, the whole thing with uh, um, the war and and people coming from other countries, the communism, for example, like mm -hmm. influence, like in space invaders sort of game, in space wars, all related with what was happening at the time, right? as well because of the vector monitor the incredible you know, like, monitor in, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think i've ever seen that before mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um i you can explain what it is better than i can but when i came here last time i played asteroids and i was with my girlfriend and we we're looking at the display and we we're like what is that display because the game is just black and white it's vector but it's so incredibly bright it's not like an lcd it's not like an oled or any kind of display exactly. technology like that it's like some bizarre thing what is, <laughs> what is going on with the display in that well um the the display itself like it's what i actually there was like um, other games that use the same technology per se we'd call raster games you know like so um as opposed as, as in as in pixels you know like they're actually like electrons that are burning the screen pretty much you know like they're being shoot like uh, directly to the screen. That's why it makes it so bright, you know? So like, um, so for example, uh, other uses of this type of monitors w would be like in pilot uh, in, uh, aircrafts where the pilot can't, can't be obscured by the direct sunlight. So they, it has to be very bright. And these were like v uh, widely available in the 70s. So like that's when people started like to do, to, to create that as well. Were you in other places besides Chengdu before this exhibition, or are you going to another city or another country after this, or what does the schedule look like? Before Chengdu, the exhibition was in Shenzhen, 
and uh, and before and actually it was the first time this exhibition of this magnitude was here in China, and actually in Asia, and uh, before that, um, no, not in Asia because we we were in Japan. Of course, I'm sorry, yeah. of course, we were in Japan. Of course, yeah, the exhibition was a huge success there. Japanese, they love games, of right? Course. Like this is also ingrained into them. And, uh, and the, the exhibition there was like one of the most popular shows that it was in the museum. It was in the Miraikan Museum, the exhibition of emerging technology. And, uh, and also like we had like the, our game on in Japan was so good. And also we had like a lot of, for example, the creator of the guy, the guy who created Space Invaders, he went to the show. Wow. He went there. He wow. gave us some things to us as well. Like we have a lot, we had a lot of creators like of uh, the, that were there, you know, sure. like not only from Space Invaders, but also from Virtual Fighter, for example. Yeah. You mentioned that you have a background in software engineering, right? Mm -hmm. How was it that you learned to, you know, maintain and repair all of these hardware arcade machines? Was that difficult for you to do, or how do you get started doing that? Basically, it's forums and internet and original manuals. <laughs> yeah, there must be like online communities of people who talk about this sort of hardware, repair it and things like that, right? Yes, that, that's exactly. I've never heard of that. I'm sure it must exist. No, if you, you know? put on YouTube, for example, like arcade repair tips. Oh, I see. <laughs> you're going to see a lot of people. And, and for example, that's something um, that is something like uh, that is actually very interesting, for example. So for example, we, I'm looking to Mrs. Pac-Man right now that I, I, I still have to troubleshoot it, yeah? So when I, there is something that I cannot fix, we have to send to someone who can fix it, yeah, when I can't. Yeah. And the, it's not like anyone who can fix it, you know, like, so actually there is a guy, we have a guy for the Mrs. Pac-Man. We have a guy for the, oh, this guy is good with Dig Dug. Sure machines you know like this guy oh this the donkey kong guy you so know? you like, like email so him there, or something there or? are special like there are guys who are like specialized you know like in certain arcades you know like because mostly because it's their favorite you know like so they know everything that there is about it so if there is a problem you know like um they know they, as soon as they what they they look oh i know what problem it is you know like the, uh, the, the, the screen is, fl is flickering in, in, the, in a certain way so it's probably the ship number 37 wow in the a column you know wow <laughs> that's how precise they are you yeah know? like that this is something very very cool interesting i think as well super interesting you're like a you're like a retro game surgeon well thank you so much for doing this for doing such a great thing for the city of chengdu and for the history of games it's just such a wonderful exhibition uh really a pleasure to visit and great to be joined by you on this podcast so uh thank you very much the last question i'd like to ask you is uh if there's any kind of message you would like to give to people who uh, would like to visit this exhibition or any kind of note for people who visit. Yeah, so please, if anyone who's come here and that is listening to the podcast, just look for Leo, yeah? Let me know and I'll, I'll make sure to try to give them an ex exclusive view of the show, yeah? <laughs> Great. Thanks so much, man. Ha 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 ha!